Today we'll be approaching Edge Elastic from a lens of a completely newbie user to Edge Elastic. So we're uh, assuming that you don't have a lot of experience using Edge Elastic. But having said that, you know, if you have dabbled in Edge Elastic, you're more than welcome to stay and we'll have a lot of, uh, you know, things to show you as well. So uh, welcome and we realize that, you know, it's the, uh, the whole back to school frenzy right now. So uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to attend today's 101. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and share my screen with folks. All right, Lauren, Bill, can uh, can you see this? Yep, looks great. All right, so I want to start off by you know explaining what Edge Elastic is. So many of you are uh, you know are new to Edge Elastic. What we are is a completely, uh, you know, uh, prepackaged formative assessment platform. So using our platform, what you can do is you can do things like create assignments, you can look at data, you can look at reports, you can manage students and rosters and, and so on and so forth. And what's great about this tool is that it really aligns with any state standardized test that you may give on your end. So whether you know, you're a state that does air testing or PARC or STAR or MCAS you know, from Massachusetts, you know, a lot of these different state standardized tests, we have material that covers all these. And uh, you, you know, what's really great about it, once again, is that it mirrors what you would find on these state standardized tests. So the, the multitude of different question types, you know, from multiple choice to multiple select to classification to drag and drop, we support all those question types. And uh, the benefit of this is that once students get acclimated to Edge Elastic, once state you know, standard testing hits, they'll be really accustomed to, to using those question types and to really you know, be able to engage with those question types. So um, I think that's probably one of the best things about Edge Elastic is that it really prepares uh, kids for those state standardized tests. And uh, how we go about doing that is that we have a, uh, a, you know, just a bevy of questions in Edge Elastic for all grade levels, for all subject areas, for all standards. So whether you're a sixth grade math teacher, for instance, or a 10th grade science teacher, we have content that have been vetted by experts on our end. So this vetted content um, is, uh, we make sure that it aligns to the correct standards, to the correct rigor, and to the correct levels. So, you know, there's rest assured that these things have been accounted for. And uh, what I want to start off first today is that, you know, sh to show you how to create a teacher account in Elastic, we'll be going through a lot of different topics at a pretty rapid clip today. But so I wanted to just really quickly dive into the aspect of how to create a teacher account on Edge Elastic. So when you first sign into, uh, well, not sign in, but when you first go to our website, edgeelastic.com, you'll see a join for free button in the upper right corner. So you simply click on this. Uh, choose the teacher option. And then, uh, you know, I won't go through this in, in too much detail because I'll, I'll let folks do this on their own free time, but you can either sign up using your name an email and password, or we offer a single sign on. So if you want to sign up with either your Google or Microsoft Office 365 accounts, that's possible as well. So during this process, when you sign up for a teacher account, you'll be asked for the name of your school and then any corresponding standards that you use um, for your uh, district or school. So once you input that, you'll be taken directly into your teacher account and then we can get started from here. So I thought what we would do first today is show you the student's perspective of Edge Elastic. You know, ultimately they'll be the end users of Edge Elastic and uh, much of their experience will, you know, depend on how you as teachers create those assignments and then push it out to them. So I did want to give uh, folks on the line today some insight into what the student's perspective on Edge Elastic looks like. So let me go ahead and dive uh, right in and sign into a student account. And uh, I see the chats coming in. So once again, Lauren had mentioned that if there's any uh, questions during the session, please feel free to input them into the chat window on Zoom and we'll take care of them. Uh, all right, so signing into a student account. You'll see here that once kids log into their Edge Elastic account, they'll be taken to their dashboard. So the dashboard consists of a collection of different assignments. 
that they're slated to do. So you'll see here that there's a, a variety of four assignments here. And uh, just some things to, to uh, denote here is that you'll see the name of the assessment indicated here. The status, uh, normally it's not started in progress or complete. And then the due date, which is really important. So think of the due date as a pencils down type thing. So right when the due date hits, kids are effectively locked out of the assignment. So what I'll do first is I'll go ahead and start this assignment at the bottom here, this one called East Canton. And uh, this then places the student into the assignment itself. And uh, just some things to uh, quickly uh, notate here is that they'll have a running tally of where they are on the, on the assignment. So you'll see, you know, questions, seven question tests here. And uh, there's a feature called text-to-speech, which is a premium feature. Once again, I'll look at, we'll go over at Jelastic through the lens of a free user today, but I did want to point out uh, at specific times during the presentation, what areas are premium. You know, this is um, available as an upgrade for you to get some additional features like text-to-speech, like shuffling questions, like rubrics and things like that. So uh, text-to-speech is a premium feature. Uh, once again, Edge Elastic consists of a, uh, a whole multitude of different question types. There's uh, 51 to be exact. And these, once again, mirror all the ones that you would see on otherwise um, on other state standardized tests. This first one is a pretty straightforward multiple choice. You'll see as we progress through these that you'll see different question types. This one is uh, fill in the blank, the pattern here. I'm just going to guess at some of these all. I'm sure I'm going to do very poorly here. This one is called the classification, where you're meant to uh, sequence things, either chronologically, high to low, low to high, so on and so forth. Multiple selection, where you're meant to uh, pick one or more of the correct answer choices. Now, having come to this question type, there is a tool called Crossout. So what this does is it uh, effectively helps students eliminate answers from consideration. So say for instance, I as a kid know that A and C are definitely not the correct answers. I can use this Crossout tool to visually help me remember not to uh, mark those as a possible correct answer. And once again, this is something that you'll find on other state tests as well. Uh, now, as we move through the test, you'll see here, this is a uh, drop down. So once again, I'm just gonna guess through some of these questions here. Read the uh, definition, then uh, fill out the meaning. And then there's a really great feature called Scratchpad, which uh, allows kids to show their work. So what this does is that once kids click on the Scratchpad work, they can then annotate answers on top of the uh, frame here. So they can use tools like uh, a freehand, they can freehand draw things. And obviously this is probably uh, more applicable to math type questions. You know, those questions where you want kids to, to be able to show their work, you know, how do they come about uh, getting the correct answer? You can uh, input things by uh, using a text tool. So they can type in with their keyboard, for instance, and then they can use things like rulers, protractors, compasses. Uh, they can draw lines, rays, and, and then, you know, shapes, squares, triangles, and then math tools as well. You know, they can do cosine, sine. So really a lot of different things for them to be able to show their work is available with the Scratchpad tool. And then some uh, other, uh, you know, options they can use. And then these for kids that needing accommodations are a magnifying glass. So this uh, helps them zero in on any, you know, part of the, the text to make it enlarged. And then there's a test option called, let me just move this out of the way here. Color contrast or a uh, zoom. So, you know, for those uh, with visual needs, you can uh, do a color contrast on the edge elastic uh, tool itself. Uh, okay, so that's Scratchpad. So as we progress through the questions, you'll see here that there's more question types. This one is a very popular one called passage-based questions uh, where kids are meant to read a passage on the left and then answer any accompanying questions on the right here. 
And uh, these can also be read aloud in the uh, premium feature of Edge Elastic. And then finally coming to the ultimate question here, uh, this is a very popular question type in Edge Elastic. It's an open-ended constructive response question, what we call essay questions. And uh, do note that these are the only question types in Edge Elastic that require manual grading by the teacher, by you, you know, teacher him or herself. Uh, everything else in Edge Elastic is auto graded by the system. So there's multiple choice, multiple selection, drag and drops. Those are all uh, auto graded. It takes the onus off teachers having to grade those questions. And the only questions that need to be uh, manually graded are these essay questions. I can say something like tennis and golf. And I'll show you uh, momentarily how we score, we go about scoring those on the teacher side. Uh, one thing to know is that kids can also bookmark questions. If you're not quite sure and you want to come back to it at a, at a later point in time before you hit submit, you can always bookmark a question. And this will then give you a visual indication that that's something that you probably need to review again before you do a final submission. Now, before I do a final submission, I did want to note that um, we in Edge Elastic are constantly saving the quiz kids' answers. So let's say, for instance, the power goes down or internet loses connectivity. There's no fear in losing work in Edge Elastic. When they get back on Edge Elastic, they'll be taken to where they last left off. And then uh, we can submit. You'll see here that they'll be taken to a, a place where they can review and, and make sure that you know, everything is answered to their, uh, to their best ability here. And we have that one flagged question that uh, we need to probably review here. And when they're ready, they can simply click Submit here. And they'll get a snapshot of their scores and the, uh, a look into all the correct responses and uh, questions on the test. Now, having you know, shown you this, this can be uh, locked uh, down for kids. So if, if you choose not to have kids uh, you know, be able to see their scores and answers, you can always hide that uh, visibility. And I'll show you how to do that momentarily as well. But if, if the default is open, what you can see is their scores on the test and then how they did on each question on the test. So if I just quickly go through these, uh, you know, green check mark denotes correct. You'll see an X that, that means incorrect. And then down below will be the correct answer and, and, and any explanations that uh, accompany the questions. John, could you briefly just mention what which one of these features are, are strictly premium and which are available to everyone? Uh, yes, that's a great question. Thanks for bringing that, Bill. So on the student side, the ones that I've showed thus far are all free. So what you see, um, you know, what you see is what you get, <laughs> pretty much uh, what I've shown thus far. There are a couple features on the student side that are premium. Uh, these include things like calculator. Uh, teachers can pick a calculator for students to, to have, uh, you know, while they're working on the test. Uh, the calculator comes in one of three flavors, either scientific, graphing, or basic calculators. And then, of course, that uh, aforementioned Texas speech, that's a read aloud feature that's also premium. So hopefully that answers uh, that question. Thanks for bringing that up, Bill. All right, so let's now go into a teacher account. This is where all the uh, magic happens, so to speak. And you'll see here that I'm logged into a teacher account, Albert Einstein. And uh, once you start creating uh, assignments, everything will then be shown in this tab on the left called assignments. So you know, after today's session, feel free to sign up for a teacher account. And then uh, you know, you'll be able to create assignments and then look at those in uh, this tab right here. So if I click on the assignments tab, you'll see here that all the assignments are uh, outlined in front of you uh, chronologically, the most recent one on top, and then you know, as we go down the, the, the more uh, the ones in the past. And one thing to note, and this is probably the most popular feature in Edge Elastic, is what we call the live class board. So this little icon, this little monitor here, if you click on this, this will take you directly into that test that we just took. So I'm actually gonna go into the, the same test that we just took as a kid, this East Canton one. Click on Live Class Board. And uh, for those of you wondering, East Canton is a high school in uh, Ohio. So I just wanna give you uh, that information. Okay, so now having come into the Live Class Board, you'll see here that there's a lot of um, colors <laughs> and a lot of things to look at here. Uh, think of the bar, the, the table here, the bar chart, 
as a snapshot or a glimpse of how kids are doing, you know, uh, as a whole on the assignment. So the color, you know, obviously indicates green is correct, red is incorrect, yellow is partially correct for those uh, multiple selection questions. And then uh, if you have any open-ended questions, those will be denoted in blue here. So that just gives you a heads up that you need to uh, score those uh, when you get the chance, uh, the ones indicated in blue here. And the dotted we line weaving in and out, this denotes the average time spent on the question. So I, as a teacher, can see right off the bat that questions five, two, and possibly six, you know, occupy the most time on the student side, whereas uh, one, four, and maybe seven, uh, they, you know, were able to answer those a little bit more quickly. So once again, the bar chart up on top is an overall progress of how kids did. So I, as a teacher, would, you know, definitely uh, probably do a little bit more remediation on question number six, for instance. There's more red incorrect answers than correct. Whereas I know that my kids excelled in questions one and two, and we can probably just, you know, not have to worry about those concepts in, in future uh, iterations. Now, uh, the cards down below, these indicate a single kid in your class. So each card represents one kid. And then uh, obviously the, uh, the little uh, rectangles down below indicates how they fared on the test itself. And you'll see things like their average score, uh, their status, whether they're submitted, graded, uh, not started probably denotes that they were either absent or you know, haven't started the test quite yet. And then you can slowly scroll down and see each kid's uh, you know, progress on the test. Uh, let me pause briefly here. Any questions to note uh, either Bill or Lauren at this point? Nothing at this time. Okay, great. Thanks for that uh, update. Uh, all right. So there's a couple of other things I did want to mention on this screen is that there's the ability for teachers to pause an assessment. So this allows, let, let's say you're giving an assessment that spans multiple days. It, it's a long test and we can't possibly finish it in one class sitting. What teachers can do is they can pause it after day one. And then uh, when kids come back on day two, they can reopen the test. So the great thing about that is that the, the test will not remain active on the kids account for them to run home and, and look up answers on the internet, for instance. Uh, only when you come back on the second or you know whatever day it is, will the test then start again? You can then reopen it. So that's, the, that's what we call the pause feature here. There's also something called redirect. So think of redirect as a redo option. So for any kids um, that you, uh, you know, stipulate here, let's say kid, uh, this CCS one and uh, this number 16, you can always give them another attempt at the test. And that's what we call redirect. So by simply checking the box next to their names, you can then click redirect and then assign them uh, a new uh, due date. That's what the close date means, a new due date, and then redirect back to them. And you'll see here that once uh, having done that, you'll then get uh, a redirected status in your live class board that shows them that they're on their, uh, in this case, attempt number two. Uh, I know there's a lot of to, a, a lot to unpack here in the live class board. So uh, any questions from anyone, feel free to and put them in the chat in the Zoom window. All right, so if no further questions, I will uh, go on to how to create assessments in Nigelastic. So this is really the fun part and the really creative part. Um, I, as a teacher, how do I create those assignments for kids to take? So there's, you know, there's a multiple, multitude ways of uh, approaching this. One is to use our pre-built assessments in, Nigel, in, in Nigelastic. So uh, in your free teacher account, once you create that account, you'll see a tab on the left called test. Now, once we click on that test, we can then, what we do is we filter on the left side. So you'll see these different filters on the left side where you can filter for things like grade level, subject area, standard sets, uh, collections, uh, and I'll go through what each of these means, but uh, having filtered, and I'll pick an example, of, let's say grade 10 math, for instance, so grade 10, and then math as a subject. You'll see here that then uh, all grade 10 math uh, materials will then pop up on the right side. So uh, each of these cards represents an assi assignment. 
And the way these assignments are uh, can be found is that we have a collection, you know, so we have uh, not only people that built these build the assignments in our platform, but we also pull these from the state standardized platforms like like air, for instance, Ohio, or MCAS or uh, engage NY or NJ model, model curriculum for um, any Jersey people out there today. Um, these are all available for free in the platform. So you can always search for those underneath the collections filter. So I do encourage those, you know, for those people not knowing quite know where to start to first look at the collections and then filter for all that, uh, you know, all those different uh, state tests here. Smart Starts Diagnostics, for instance. Edge Elastic Certified, what this means is that they, these are assessments that have been vetted, uh, once again, for the correct rigor and level in our system by experts. So that's actually a good place to start. So we'll, you know, we'll look for any uh, Edge Elastic Certified assignments in the uh, entire library. And then, you know, obviously it will then, uh, a lot of different assessments will show up. So how do I know that they're the right, uh, you know, ones that I want to give to my kids? What you can do is you can hover over the card and then click on the preview button up the top. And this will then take you into the uh, student's instance of this assignment. And then you as a teacher can go through the questions and see whether it's appropriate uh, and something that you may want to possibly assign to your kids. So just scrolling down, you'll see AZ Merit for our Arizona friends, uh, FSA for Florida, AIR for Ohio. So, you know, look for your state and, uh, you know, you'll be able to find it in the collections tab. Now, uh, this is probably a question that pops up that, you know, what if I, I like a test, but I want to make some edits to it, or I want to tweak it somehow to make it fit my needs a, a little bit more appropriately. What you can do is you can click on the title of the test. So let's say, for instance, I really like this first spring 2017 test, but I want to make some changes to it. What I can do is I can click on the title and then clone it. So cloning it is, uh, think of it as customizing and making your own copy of the test. What it does is it turns it now into under your uh, purview. And what you can do is you can clone it and then make any appropriate edits. So let me go ahead and do that. I clone it. I click on uh, create a clone, continue to clone. And then you'll see here that that then allows me to uh, do things like add items to review it. Uh, reviewing it simply means I can either resequence it. Let's say, you know, I, fe I feel that question number one is better served a little bit down below. I can, you know, change the order of things. Uh, using the trash can icon, I can outright delete questions. You know, let's say I haven't covered question number one or this one about uh, the function n right here. And I can also at this point add questions myself. So uh, we can customize it by mixing and matching not only questions that are currently in Edge Elastic, but we can author our own items using the Edge Elastic um, item types. Now, this is a really powerful tool. So let me show you quickly how to um, add items yourself. So what I can do as a educator is I can click on the add items. And then you'll see a little button called create new item. And what that does is it unlocks, um, you know, I think there's 12 or 13 different question uh, buckets here, you know, fill in the blanks, writing, passage, highlight, math, math, you can really geek out here. There's about, I believe, 16 or 17 different math, math uh, item types, uh, you know, that span the gamut from expression to matrices to math essay. Uh, there's, uh, you know, range plotter, things like that, that you can use. And then, of course, graphing for those higher math levels like, uh, you know, algebra, trig, and uh, calculus. You can graph inequalities, you can graph parabolas. That's all supported here on Edge Elastic. Uh, let me go through an example of, you know, just creating a really simple multiple choice. You know, multiple choice is by far the most popular question type on Edge Elastic. So I thought I would just go ahead and, you know, go through the process of how do I create such a question? So by clicking the uh, multiple choice standard box here, just remember that when you're creating question in Edge Elastic, uh, you're creating both the question stem and the answer key. So we need to, uh, you know, either type in a question or, you know, if you have a, a Word doc or Google doc at the ready, what you can do is you can simply copy and then paste it back into Edge Elastic to save some time. 
So we can say something like, uh, which, I think we had some Ohio folks on the line today. So which cities are in Ohio as a simple multiple choice question. So then we, uh, remember, we need to create the answer key. So we'll say, we'll give them some uh, possible answers here. We can see Chicago, Miami, Columbus, and let's say uh, Detroit. And then what we do is we uh, mark the correct answer down below where it says set correct answer. In this case, it would be uh, C. And before we move on here, uh, What's great about Edge Elastic also is that teachers can really jazz up the questions. So under this question stem here, you'll see a toolbar that pops up. You can add things like uh, videos, you can add images, uh, videos meaning, you know, if you want kids to watch a video before they answer the question, whether it's a YouTube video or Khan Academy video, um, it could be maybe a, a FET simulation, you know, for science teachers, you can, you can add those into Edge Elastic. Uh, or any images, you know, just to kind of make things fun or creative. And then, of course, you can customize it using, uh, you know, bold, italicized, underline. You can add tables, charts, hyperlinks, uh, bulleted lists, and then, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So really, you can go to town using this, uh, these tools up above. And then just one thing to note before you actually save the question that you've created, you need to answer, uh, you need to set the, the number of points. So by default, every point, every question in Elastic is worth one point, but you can always, uh, you know, increase or decrease as you see fit here. And then uh, you'll see the tabs up above. Preview is exactly what it sounds like. It, it shows you what that question looks like from the student's point of view. And then the metadata. This is very important. Every question in Elastic is tied to a standard. So whether um, it's a state standard that you use, you know, whether it's NJSLSs, for instance or if you use Common Core, or for science teachers, it could be NGSS, it could be, uh, you know, whatever it is they use for your uh, curriculum, you'll need to tie a standard back to the question. And this is where you'll find it. So uh, first off, find the grade level, and then search for the standard itself, you know, whether I'm a math, English, science, or social studies teacher. Uh, I'll just use an example of Math Common Core here. And then browse for those uh, standards that pop up. So let's say it's a geometry standard that tests for A1 and A2. I can simply click apply. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and save the question itself. So you'll see here that once I've saved the question, if I go back to the review tab, remember the re review tab is all the questions you have on the assignment. That question that I just authored myself will then appear on the bottom which cities are in Ohio, and then you can, you know, simply drag it up or drag or keep it as is. And then when you're ready, what you can do is you can either publish the test or you can assign the test. So the difference between publishing and assigning is this. Publishing allows you to, uh, you know, save it to a library, what we call it. So we have four different libraries in Edge Elastic, private, public, school, and district. Private is the most uh, restrictive, meaning that only you yourself can see the uh, assignment. Uh, there's no other uh, eyes on it. And public is the whole Edge Elastic community. Anyone using Edge Elastic can then see and possibly use that same assignment. And then school is tethered to the school that you teach at. District is district wide. Let's say you teach at uh, Los Angeles Unified or Chicago Public Schools. Everyone using Edge Elastic within that district that you stipulate can then see the assignment. Uh, that's publishing. Now, assigning is when you're ready to push it out to your class. So let me show you what that looks like when you push it out to your kids. Uh, click on the assign button. And the first tab up above, you'll see a sequence of five different tabs. Uh, when anything that, that is do denoted by a dollar sign here in orange is a premium feature. And you know, I'll, I'll briefly mention some of these, uh, but anything that's not that does not have an S is available and ready for use right now for you as a free user. So the first thing we need to do, to do is we need to set, uh, you know, which class of ours needs to get the assignment. And, you know, classes can be uh, created and managed underneath this manage class tab once you've created your teacher account. Uh, you pick a class here. 
and then we pick either uh, all kids in the class or specific kids. It's up to you. You can either, the, the default is every kid in the class gets the assignment. But if you're only wanting a couple of kids, you can then just type in their names there. Uh, and then the testing window. That's really important. The open date and the close date. Open date, it's uh, by default, is automatic. So right when you push it out, it's available for kids to take. Uh, but you can always set a time in the future. Let's say you want it to be available only you know, on next Monday, for instance, you can always set that date. And then the close date is uh, normally one week after the open date. But once again, you can set it for the end of the school year, for instance, June of 2022, if you wanted to. And then uh, some of these other things, test behavior, I just want to quickly go through some of these options. Uh, this is the release scores is remember that aforementioned uh, ability to, you know, either hide that visibility or, um, you know, allow them to see their scores. This is where you select it. You can either release scores or choose not to have those scores and responses shown to them. Uh, evaluation method is really only uh, applicable to anything with uh, partial credit, which means multiple selection problems. When you're meant to pick, uh, let's say, A, C, and E as answer choices, we can either give partial credit, all or nothing, or consider item level evaluation. And you can see these definitions if you hover uh, to the right here. And then once again, some of these premium features, the uh, calculator for kids to work on, if this, that's something that's interested, uh, interesting to you, that's available. And then we come to this bucket called anti-cheating. So this is a very popular uh, thing in Agilastic is that we have these things in place where you can, you know, it's not a foolproof method, but we can do our best to really, you know, uh, lock down the, the avenues for kids to, uh, to do nefarious things on Agilastic. You know, we, you can shuffle questions, you can shuffle answers so that kids sitting next to one another don't see the questions in the same order. Uh, you can do things like complete test in one sitting that it, it really locks them into one test um, session. Uh, you can restrict navigation out of tests. So what this means is that, for instance, um, we, we want to keep kids in the Agilastic window and not prevent them from jumping into different windows or you know tabs on the internet to look up answers. Um, and if they do, for instance, drop you know go to Google or Wikipedia to look up answers, you as a teacher will be informed uh, once they navigate out of the test. So these are some of the premium features that are available uh, that we call anti-cheating. And then auto redirect. So remember when I showed you back on the live class board, you as a teacher can manually direct, redirect kids um, to give them a redo for a, for a test. The auto redirect feature, which is premium, allows you to set a threshold. And let's say the threshold is set at 70%. So any kids that have not garnered 70% will then be able to do a redo, you know, just automatically. Our system will give them another attempt because they've not hit a certain threshold. And then, uh, you know, having gone through all these tabs, when you're ready, you can click assign, and then the test will then get pushed out uh, to the kids on their end. And uh, remember, you know, back in the student view, this, uh, let me show you in real time what this looks like. So, once you push out the test, this one right here, you'll get a little success message. And then back on the student side, you'll see here that it's this one right here, it's pushed out and then they can then start the test. All right, uh, let me pause again briefly. I know there was a lot covered in that last portion. Uh, any questions uh, from folks on the line? Therese has a question. Is there any means to print a copy of a created test that they've created on uh, Edulastic? Yes, that is a great question. Yes, there is. So back in the assignments and, uh, you know, most of the questions that you, that folks will have will be found underneath the live class board. So right here, what you can do is you can uh, click print and this will print a copy of the assessment with the answer key. So it's, it's a really handy uh, reference for you. And since we're lingering on the screen, I did want to mention a couple other things under the more button. So uh, you as teachers can al always download the grades and the responses. So the grades, meaning the percentage that they got on the assessment, you know, 50% or 80%. 
and the responses is a CSV file of their responses on the test. You know, for multiple choice, did they answer A, B, C, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, for uh, open-ended questions, what was their response? We uh, download those into a CSV file, which you can then download and then, uh, you, you know, use, you can put it in a data warehouse, you can, you know, keep physical copies of it, whatever it is that you need on your end. So that's available under the more button for download grades and download response. And then we also have a standards based report here. So um, looking at this middle tab here, every, you know, remember that every question in Edge Elastic is tied to a standard. This is where you can have a really good synopsis of how kids have been faring on the test and you know which questions and which standards are either kids excelling at or really um, probably need a little bit more remediation can be found under the standards based report, uh, which is free to all users. Uh, all right, so that's the process of creating an assignment and then pushing it out to kids. Now, you're probably wondering, you know, now that I've created my Edge Elastic free teacher account, how do I get my kids into the system? So uh, where that's found is under the user management area here under manage class. And, you know, there's a variety of different ways to add kids into your class. We, we can do things like, uh, we, we've actually, before I get into that, the easiest way and probably the most, um, you know, that doesn't consume a lot of time is to sync with Google Classroom. So if you're a district that uses Google Classroom, this is a one touch system where right when you click sync with Google Classroom, it takes all those classes and rosters and kids from Google Classroom and imports them directly into Elastic. So it's a really neat feature to, um, to really you know, take the onus off you having to uh, manually input your kids. But you know, if you don't use Google Classroom, no worries about that. You can always manually input them by either adding kids individually or adding kids using their uh, you know, Google emails, Office 365 emails, or just doing a first name, last name uh, convention here. So if you use the name convention, just remember that it will add a four digit random number to the end of there. So let's say for instance, uh, you know, Dan Smith, it'll put something like one, two, three, four at the end to create that username. And then what you can do at this point is that you can uh, click on the print feature and this will then uh, give you a, you know, a, a, so a list of all your roster and you can simply uh, send these to your kids that this is, hey, this is your username and this is your password for all the kids in the class. So I do highly recommend that folks use Google Classroom as you know, as a means as an easy way to populate your uh, class. But you know if you don't have that, you can always enter them in manually. All right, let me pause again. Any questions about how to create classes or how to uh, add kids to, to your classes? Yeah, John, would you would you mention a little bit about had a question earlier about. Uh, from a, a teacher of a self-contained classroom uh, with multi-subjects, just kind of the, the strategies around organizing classes in Edge Elastic uh, for those teachers that, that use it for different subjects. Right, yeah, great question, Bill. I'm glad you brought that up. So yes, in, in Edge Elastic, we support, you know, you're not tied or tethered to one specific grade level or a subject area in your, in your uh, account. You can create a multitude of different classes and subject areas. So in your managed class, what you can do is you can create, let's for instance, uh, another class. You know, we already have one populated here that's tied to grade five ELA, but let's say I'm a, um, a teacher that also teaches, uh, let's say I have a homeroom class, but I also have different uh, individual subject areas as well. What I can do is I can click on the create class and then uh, create that uh, you know, class that I need. So let's say, um, I'm gonna call this class two to be really generic here. Remember the first one was the ELA. Let's say I also teach math, for instance. I can simply click on math, select the standard sets, and then uh, having done that, click save. And then I can simply repeat the process. You know, um, I can create a science class, for instance. I can create a uh, ELL class. I can create a social studies class. There's no limit in the number of classes they can create in one account.
All right, any other questions from uh, folks on the line? Let me go ahead and do a quick time check. Okay, it looks like we're about three quarters of the way in today. Um, I did wanna save some time for Q and A. Before I do jump into that, I, I just wanna, you know, for those that came a little bit late to the, today's session, I did wanna reiterate that there's two ways, uh, two places that you wanna be in, in order to create assessments. Uh, and these are completely free to all users, the item bank and the test bank. So think of item bank as a, as a repository of loose questions in Edge Elastic that you can then add to your assessments, whether you know it be math or English or social studies or science or big four, or the test tab, which is a place where you can find pre-built uh, assessments in Edge Elastic uh, either shared by fellow educators or by some of these, you know, curriculum uh, partners that we work with, like NJ, uh, NJ Moda Curriculum and Engage NY. So I'd highly recommend that folks uh, first, you know, find their way to either the item bank or the test bank, and then look at the possibilities uh, in creating assessments. Hey, John, can I go jump in with two questions real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, Kelly asked if she can open back up a test after the time expired for kids' accommodations. She wants the majority of the class to be done by a certain time, but she has a few students that have extended time. Is it possible to open up just for those handful of students? Yes, Kelly. So, uh, yeah, if that would be uh, the redirect feature. So, let's say, for instance, we want to give uh, those uh, kids another attempt at the you know at the test. What you do is you go into the live class board. And then uh, for those, let's say the first three kids on my roster, we wanna give them another attempt. The redirect feature is the way to allow them another attempt at the test. And then you can then set a new due date, uh, let's say a week out from today. Uh, all right, hopefully that answers that question, Kelly. Uh, there was a second part, uh, Lauren, I think. Oh uh, yeah, another question. Um... In the item bank, is there a way to see which questions you have used before? That, yes, you can, yep. So the item bank, that's a great question as well. So what you can do is you can uh, like these questions. So you see how you, once you heart them, you can then uh, add them to your own repository. And then under my favorites, these are all questions that you've used in the past. You can also do that by simply clicking the question itself. But anything that you heart will then end up in this uh, area right here. And then you can see that you've used those in the past. And folders, uh, you know, this, uh, this brings me to folders as well. So folders are a way to uh, sort of, you know, make, so you create a folder, let's say fall or spring or winter of 2021, for instance, you could then add assessments into those folders and help you better manage, uh, you know, what you've assigned thus far. So I, I do recommend that people create folders in order to better manage, you know, the assessments that they've already pushed out. All right, Lauren, should we uh, progress to the question of the Q&A portion of today? Uh, yeah, it seems like we're already dive, okay. dove right into that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, going back to the extended time question real quick. Is it possible to just give extended time to those students as opposed to another attempt through the redirect feature? Extended, so tell me more about that option. Uh, so my anticipation is that they probably have a classroom of say 20 plus students. And they have um, a group of four students that maybe get extended time on um, tests. And as opposed to closing the test for all, all students at a certain time, they want most students in the class to be done by that certain point. Um, but give additional time for those that have the IEP. For, yeah, so those, those in, in that scenario, you're, you're better served if you put the IEP students in their own class and then, uh, but still, you know, put, push out the same assessment, but then give them their own window to take the test. Great, that was my, that was my guess. <laughs> but figured you're the, you're the pro here. Now let's see what other questions have come in. I think most have been answered in the chat and in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Bill and Lauren for managing. You guys have been fast and furious with their answers, so that's been great. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you wanna to touch real quick on um, Smart Start? I know I'm gonna cover it briefly, but if you wanna just give a little shout out for it too. 
Uh, sure, yes. Yeah. So smart start. So this in the test bank here, what I do is I'll go ahead and clear the filter so you can see. If you're looking for smart start uh, diagnostics and, and things like that, we have some pre-built tests here. So what you do is you, under the collections filter, you look for smart start diagnostics. And you'll see here that there's, um, you know, roughly almost 200 tests that span different uh, grade levels, you know, ELA grade three, grade five. These are free to use. So these follow the smart start curriculum. And uh, what you can do is you can assign them outright or you can make copies of the tests. So once again, you can clone them, make them your own and then push it out with uh, either a different name or you can keep it as is. And uh, the smart start uh, material has been vetted by our team. So you can always rest assured that they're following the correct rigor and grade levels. And there is one other question that just came in. Um, I see Bill typing on it, but I will ask it since it might have come up from other individuals as well. Um, is there a possibility to add a question that has an A and B um, portion to the question? Yeah, yes, yeah. What we call that is multi-part. That's a great question. So in the uh, item bank, if you want to do a part A, part B question, what you do is you first create a test. So let me go ahead and create a new item. And there's a question type down below called multi-part. So this is where you can then do a part A, part B. So you'll be asked to uh, you know, write in your part A question, whether it's multiple choice. You know, I'm just going to put something gibberish here, create that. And then part B, it could be a different question type. So you can do a multiple choice and then maybe an essay or a drag and drop or a classification. So you're not limited uh, in, in that sense. You can mix and match part A, part B. So another part, this is where part B comes in. We can do a true and false, for instance. Set it, save it. And then under preview mode, you'll see here that kids have part A and part B. Does this part A and part B also um, possible for a passage-based question? It, uh, yes, it is, yeah. So passage base will support part A, part B as well. 